The M4's direct impingement system and linear configuration help make it one of the softest shooting and lightest combat rifles of all time. Still, it does have a few shortcomings. It doesn't play well with short barrels, and because it craps where it eats, it tends to compound the issue of excessive fouling when running a sound suppressor. Now, several companies and even military branches have sought to upgrade, upgrade the M4 and M16 by converting them to piston-driven firearms. This has been done with varying degrees of success. One of the lesser known hybrid evolutions of the M4 is the Taiwanese T65, a purpose-built piston-driven upper that utilizes an M16 compatible lower receiver. This design did pretty well and later evolved and incorporated similar ergonomics and modular upgrades that the American M4 did in its latest iteration, the T91. In the past, Western shooters could only read about the T91 as it was totally unavailable in, into the United States. Until now. Enter the Wolf Performance Ammunition A1 Upper, the T91 civilian variant. The Wolf A1 Upper is ostensibly a T91 Upper. In fact, the only features it lacks are the proper rear sight of the T91 and its combination of bayonet lug and Picatinny rail segment under the front side tower. The tower is incredibly robust and is finished in what seems like a gray matte parkerization. The front side above it is dovetailed into the tower and is secured by a roll pin that runs perpendicular to the dovetail's trench. The post above is adjustable for windage using a bullet, but can't readily be adjusted with an AR-15 sight tool because of minor differences in the design and its construction. Now, like the AR-15, the tower houses a tap that siphons excess gas from rounds traveling down the barrel to cycle the action automatically. It differs from the Armalite in that it transfers this gas to a piston head contained within a sleeve instead of through a gas tube directly to the bulk carrier key. So instead of dumping excess gas and carbon into the receiver itself, it simply vents it underneath the handguards and out the handguard vents. The large loop at the front of the gun that looks like a gas selector functions as a lock for the piston assembly capture. The assembly consists of a small cup-shaped piston head that connects to a transfer rod via a roll pin contained within a metallic sleeve. This configuration allows the piston head to pivot slightly, presumably to account for debris or fouling in the transfer sleeve. The piston rod features a primary return spring, an adapter collar, a secondary recoil buffer spring, and a steel alignment collar. This assembly interfaces with a small channel in the upper receiver located where an AR-15's gas tube would normally feed into, allowing a piston rod to protrude into the receiver. The protruding portion of this rod then hits an integral piston strike face attached to the bolt carrier, right where the gas key is normally located on a standard AR-15 bolt carrier group. And in fact, it looks an awful lot like a modified gas key, except it's welded to the carrier. Now this is the first indication you'll get that the A1's bolt carrier isn't the same as a standard AR-15's. The other is the lack of teeth on the right side of the bolt carrier to engage the forward assist with, because the A1 doesn't have a forward assist. And while the carrier is obviously different, the bolt itself is unmistakably an AR-15 bolt. But it does lack one small detail, gas rings. In place of the gas rings, the A1's bolt is just a solid piece of forged steel. Now despite these differences, the A1 upper utilizes many of the same components as the AR-15 series of rifles. For example, it uses the same charging handle as an AR, and in testing, is compatible with all in-spec AR-15 charging handles that I had available. This includes the PRI Gas Buster, a mil-spec regular aluminum one, BCM's extended charging handle, and the Next Level Arms charging handle. Like the T91, the A1 features a 16-inch barrel. Unlike the T91, the A1's barrel is hammer-forged with a 1 in 7 twist, and its muzzle features half by 28 threads, making it compatible with all 5.56 AR-15 muzzle devices. The barrel is coated with an FNC coating and is made in America, and in testing, both my personal Silencer Co. Saker 762 and Gemtex Halo that was provided by Silencer Shop ran great on the gun with no noticeable blowback. Now these threads are topped with a proprietary muzzle device that functions as both a compensator and a flash hider. It's designed to be mounted with the compensating ports at the 2 o'clock position. Because of this, the muzzle device has a small witness mark at the very top to aid in alignment. It also features a jam nut so that shooters can align their own compensator properly on the muzzle threads themselves. Now the flash hider brake combo worked well in testing as the gun's recoil was negligible at worst. Plus, the flash signature wasn't terrible at night, nor was the gun excessively loud or blasty when shot indoors. Now moving backward, 
The hand guards are built from heat resistant polymer that features internal heat shields and external ribs for a more secure grip for the support hand. These grips are secured to the front sight tower via a steel retention pin and by a proprietary delta ring. Now, because the A1 is designed to interface with a standard AR-15's lower receiver, it utilizes the same push pins, so shooters familiar with the basic disassembly and cleaning of the AR-15 will feel right at home with the A1. Another interesting feature of the A1 is its railed upper receiver. It's perfect for mounting optics or rear iron sights, and you're going to need one of these to actually hit anything because the A1 doesn't come with a rear sight of any type. But given how inexpensive and how many different models are available today, it makes a lot of sense that Wolf wouldn't include one in order to both cut costs and to make sure the shooter is able to equip the gun however they feel is appropriate. Now that we have a near encyclopedic understanding of the internals and the gun's features, let's take a closer look at the performance of the A1 upper. Now in testing, the A1 properly fit lower receivers made by Palmetto State Armory, Bushmaster, Anderson Arms, SIG, and BCM. It fed flawlessly from every Stanag magazine I had on hand. This includes Lancer, Magpul, USGI Aluminum, both 30 and 20 round varieties, Korean Steel Mags, Tapco Polymer Magazines, Daniel Defense's new 32 round magazine, and even Set Me L Steel Magazines. The action ran noticeably cleaner with a suppressor than my direct impingement rifles, and recoil felt slightly reduced, but was basically the same. The only noticeable difference when shouldering the rifle is it tended to be a little more nose heavy because of the addition of a piston. Now, I tested five different brands of ammunition in the A1 from a rest with a Burris XTR2 5 to 25 power scope set to maximum magnification to try to eliminate as many human errors as possible in accuracy testing. At 100 yards, Hornady's 55 grain steel match performed the best with a five round group measuring just 1.26 inches. Next, SIG Elite Ammunition's 77 grain match grade rounds came in at a close second at 1.31 inches followed by ZQI's M855 ammo at 2.05. Winchester's White Box 55 grain full metal jacket came in at 2.24 inches and Wolf Performance Ammunition's 55 grain full metal jackets at 2.6. Clearly, the Taiwanese gal has expensive tastes, but it still performs well enough for plinking or combat use with even the least expensive ammunition. Still, with an MSRP of $599, the Wolf A1 offers shooters on a budget, an incredible platform with which to build a piston-driven AR. The A1, like the T91 it so closely emulates, represents an alternate evolution of the M16, M4 family of weapons. It retains the same linear configuration and aluminum receiver construction, but abandons the direct impingement system in favor of a short-stroke, piston-driven action. This results in a slightly heavier, but more reliable platform, one ideal for sound suppressors or SBR builds. And while the concept of a piston-driven upper isn't really anything new, the A1's military heritage and affordable price point put it in a league of its own. So if a shooter is looking to own a piece of Taiwanese military history or simply wishes to build an affordable piston-driven AR, the Wolf A1 is the perfect upper to complete that strip lower they bought during the panic. Thanks guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more burst reviews. Oh, and Stay tuned as we have put a ton of accessories on this gun during the video and we'll be doing a perfect A1 build in the near future. Thanks guys.